In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I've always been fascinated by languages. Perhaps it began when I was 12, studying Latin, French, English, and Russian. Then I moved to America, and I didn't take any of those. And when I had these Mexican gentlemen working for me in Arizona, I really blew it by not learning Spanish. They did teach me some Spanish, not the kind of Spanish you can talk about in church. <laughs> and then later I was working for the Japanese for over 13 years. I worked for two different Japanese corporations and they too taught me bad words. And in turn, taught them bad words. So we got even. One of the Japanese engineers said to me one time, English is so hard because you have so many words that sound the same with different meanings. For instance, here's a handful just to, for you to ponder. Mine, that has multiple meanings. Interest. Date. Just think about that. Just think of date. You know, it's a time, a place, or it's a little thing that you eat. <laughs> Engage. Leave. Novel. Park. Play. One of my favorites, hysterical. Could be really funny, or it could be somebody losing their mind. So when I sat down to write today's sermon, based on today's gospel, three words came to my mind. Hospitality, generosity, and appreciation. All could be taken in different contexts. But I want to take each one individually in no particular order. But I will start with the one whose meaning in this case might be the most difficult to grasp. And that is appreciation. Not the definition meaning grasping a fuller understanding of a situation or an investment that has increased in value over time. In this case, appreciation in relation to today's gospel has a completely different meaning. Webster's Online Dictionary describes appreciation in this sense as a feeling or an expression of admiration, approval, or gratitude, as in, I want to express my appreciation for all that you've done. Jesus is telling us that if we appreciate those who are working on his behalf to bring the kingdom of God into the hearts and minds of others, then we also appreciate him. To look at those who toil in the vineyard, each in our own way, or to look at others as they do God's work, is to appreciate them to approve of them, even admire them, while also being grateful for the work that they do. When we appreciate that someone else is doing God's work for his people, then we are appreciating them the same way that we appreciate Jesus for the great work that he did and continues to do for us. The next word is hospitality. I appreciate the hospitality. You see what I did there? Which is the work that the people do here at St. Peter's, in particular on Saturdays, in feeding the poor and the needy. People come to partake in the fruits of the vine program, and in true Episcopalian fashion, they are fed. One can only hope that in addition to the physical sustenance they receive, that in some way they're also fed spiritually. This is a very 
It is the very definition of hospitality as it is lived out through the material actions of the church. The church should not only be a place of refuge and sanctuary, a safe haven for sojourners and those who need a refuge from the difficulties of life. The church should also be a place of welcome, of friendliness, and a place where the lonely can find solace and comfort. God's house here on earth, which is the body of Christ, must be a place where life's troubles can be cast aside, even if it's only for a short time. That precious time spent worshiping God, which can feel like far too fleeting a moment, can actually be extended beyond Sunday mornings through a greater faith in God and in his son, Jesus Christ. Hospitality can be seen to be the receiving or bestowing upon others of well-intentioned treatment. As a noun, hospitality means the friendly and generous reception and entertainment of guests visitors or strangers. Synonyms of hospitality include friendliness, welcome, helpfulness, neighborliness, warmth, kindness, congeniality, and courtesy. No wonder English is so hard to learn. As an adjective, hospitality can be the relating to or denoting of the business of housing or entertaining visitors. Hospitality refers to the relationship between a guest and a host, wherein the host receives the guest with goodwill, and this includes the reception and entertainment of visitors or strangers. When I think of hospitality, I'm reminded of Hebrews 13.2, quite literally one of my favorite passages in the entire Bible. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. I frequently run into people who tell me they think they might have experienced this at some point, and that it really moved them into believing that it actually happened. It is likely that most of us have felt this occurrence, often finding ourselves unable to fully recognize the event until after it has happened. Just as with appreciation for those who work on Jesus' behalf, if we are extending hospitality to a child of God, possibly even an angel, we not only do it for them, we do it for Jesus himself. In Matthew chapter 25, Jesus warns us to be careful not to make assumptions when he says, I was a stranger, yet you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, yet you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, yet you did not look after me. To which the people respond feebly, that's a new word, feebly, we didn't know it was you. Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? And I don't need to interpret this for you. Lord, if we had known it was really you, of course we would have offered you welcome, hospitality, comfort, and kindness. But we didn't know it was you. And we don't bother with those other people. You're important. They are not. 
But this is simply not true. And it reminds me of a story. It was a lay person who saw him first. She went straight to the priest. Father, he's right there in the pew. The priest went to see and immediately called the bishop to inform him. By now, everyone in the church knew. The bishop was beside himself, and he didn't know what to do, so he called the archbishop. The bishop told the archbishop, He's right here, one of our churches, archbishop. Jesus is here, right now. What should we do? The archbishop went silent for a moment as he pondered the gravity of the situation, and then he replied, Look busy. <laughs> it is human nature to act differently when the box or someone of status or importance is there. The police call this the halo effect. When motorists pass a police car who has somebody pulled over at the side of the road, they drive by at exactly the speed limit. <laughs> We've all done it. Not a single mile per hour, like they've never broken the speed limit in their lives. And that's exactly what Jesus is telling us not to do today. No, he's not telling us to blow by at 80. Jesus is telling us that we have to treat everyone as though they are him. Because not only will you not know when it is he really him, whoever it is deserves to be treated as though they were him. Because how you treat them is exactly how you are treating Jesus. More from Matthew 25. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, when you refuse to help the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were refusing to help me. The opposite should be true, must be true. Another synonym for hospitality is generosity. And I omitted this one earlier from the synonym list because I feel generosity deserves to be treated separately. Jesus says in John 12, 8, you will always have the poor amongst you. How we take care of the less fortunate members of the community is a direct measure of our faith, our willingness to do both what is right and what Jesus has commanded us to do. It is a measure of our generosity. If we are there to lend the helping hand of abundance to those who have far less than we, then we are offering our generosity to not only those who need and require it, but also to Jesus himself. He is telling us today that we should be kind, generous, and hospitable, even to a child. Why is that a big deal? Well, it's because a child has very little to give back. Our love for God is directly measured by how we treat others. Last week we learned that God knows exactly how many hairs are on our heads and that there are a lot of us. Not only does God know everything there is to know about us, he knows just how we behave in regard to others. The welcoming and caring for others is a measure of our unselfishness. At the opening of the Eucharistic service, I'm always a little put off a little nervous when I read the collect for purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. No secrets. 
Nothing is hidden. And this includes our actions towards others. What we do for others, we do for Jesus. And what we do for Jesus, we do for the one who sent him. Like the man said, look busy.